Hi students, I welcome you once again to the lesson that is chromosomal basis of inheritance. In the last class we were talking about protein synthesis process and which the first event we have completed transcription. The second event is translation. There are three stages in translation. One is initiation, we have completed already. The second event is the translation. One part of translation, just a few words I completed. Now I am continuing what is called the translation part 2 under which we have to continue the elongation process. So what is elongation? There is nothing but the formation of a polypeptide chain. Now what are the events happening? Now the process of translation begins with what we have AEG codon, which is the start codon of mRNA. So there is a beginning stage. So now we know the tRNA translates the what is called the information present in the nucleic acid into amino acid sequence. That is from gene to what is called actually the protein. Now the translation process begins with AG codon, the initiated codon, the start codon, just coding for amino acid methionine. So there is a first event. Now the first tRNA, amino acid tRNA, I mentioned the tRNA after attachment with the amino acid is called amino acid tRNA, that is from acylation process. Now the first tRNA which carries amino acid methionine called methionine tRNA, common name amino acid, specificity with reference to the amino acid, we can say methionine tRNA. This is the only tRNA which is attached to the T cell. All other tRNAs are attached to the A site, then they are shifted to the P site. So this is the direct attachment of what is called the tRNA with methionine. That is the only what is called amino acid tRNA which attaches directly to the P site. All other tRNAs are first attached to the A site, then they are shifted to the P site. So the first tRNA which carries amino acid, methionine, because the AH codon is coding for methionine, attaches itself to the P site of ribosome, peptidyl transferase site. So we have P site, A site, both present the large subunit. We also have another, that is site, what is called A site, for the exit of what is called acylated, non-acylated or uncharged tRNA. Now, the ribosome catalyzes the addition of amino acid one by one to the growing polypeptide. So the structural and catalytic role is played by ribosome. It is we you know that one that is a protein machinery at this cell. Now the ribosome adds amino acid to the growing polypeptide. Now once the first tRNA with the methionine is in the P site, now the second tRNA with another amino acid here in the book it is given alanine. Now the second tRNA which carries amino acid alanine. Now this pays with what we have the mRNA codon. We know normally there are four codons for alanine. I am writing one of the codons GCG coding for alanine. So we have the second tRNA which carries amino acid what is called alanine. That is called alanine tRNA. Now it pairs with the mRNA codon that is GCG I am taking here in the A site of the ribosome because already in the P site we have one tRNA. Now the second tRNA is attached to what is called the A site. I represent in the diagram plate. Now the amino acid, methionine and alanine are present so close together so that there is a peptide bond is formed between what is called actually this methionine and alanine. Okay, so now you see that the methionine and alanine found attached to just actually the A site. The bond is formed between methionine and alanine, they form a peptide bond. Still you have the second tRNA is attached to the A site. And the bond is formed between the methionine and what we have alanine formed in what we have actually the A site. So now methionine is present in the P site and alanine is present in the A site. A peptide bond is formed between them. What is the peptide bond? This is nothing but the bond formed between the carboxyl group of methionine and the amino group of just what we have alanine. Simply we can say the peptide bond is formed between the carboxyl group of one amino acid and the amino group of another amino acid. That's the bond is called CONH bond or linkage. Peptide linkage. Now once the bond is formed between methionine and then what we have alanine, now the covalent bond 
between the first tRNA methionine breaks. So now the first tRNA is free from amino acid. Now we have the A site, we have both alanine and methionine together form a dipeptide is present. So A site now have just a peptide with the two amino acids. The first amino acid what we have methionine, the second amino acid what we have that is alanine. Now as a result of this one, once tRNA covalent bond with what is called methionine is broken. Now what is happening, it is leaving from the ribosome at the exit site. There is a E site which is called exit site. So the first tRNA which carried what we have methionine leaves from the ribosome at the E site. And the P site is vacant. Now the P site is vacant. Now we have what is happening in the A site. We have tRNA with the two amino acids. That is methionine and alanine together from dipeptide. Now this tRNA called what is known as actually peptidyl tRNA because it's having two amino acids, peptide bond is formed. Now it's called peptidyl tRNA. Now the peptidyl tRNA with the two amino acids is shifted from A site to the P site. Now the A site is back. Okay, so this is what's happening during what is called the protein synthesis elongation process. So one by one the codons are shifted. So the amino acids carried the tRNA first entered the A site, then to what we have the P site. At the same time, a peptide bond is formed. This is all the sequential events happening repeatedly. And the movement of ribosome all along the mRNA occurs for one codon, next codon, like that, like that. So a growing polypeptide chain is formed because of the movement of the ribosome all along what is called the mRNA shifting. Okay, so this is about one. I have to continue further. When the first tRNA without amino acid leaves the P site, that is what is happening, the ribosome now moves one codon along the mRNA strand. Now the ribosome is moving in 5 dash, 3 dash direction, exposing the codon one by one on the mRNA. This is what is happening, just like what is called a typewriter. So the ribosome now moves one codon along the mRNA strand. That is one codon means now what is happening, the next codon is exposed, the A site. Now the second tRNA molecule already there with the two, what is called the amino acid molecules, now we call as a peptidyl tRNA. So tRNA with amino acid is called amino acid tRNA. Once it is having a peptide with two or three, any number of what is called amino acids, then it's called peptidyl, what is called tRNA, peptidyl tRNA carrying only peptides. Now the second tRNA molecule that is in the A site with the two amino acids occupies the P site. It is moving from the A site to the what is called P site after the first tRNA is leaving from the P site. Now the third tRNA, now the A site is exposed, it becomes vacuum and provides a space for the third tRNA to reach it. Now the third tRNA with any number of amino acids, sorry, any amino acid, here I am taking serine, the codon for that one in the mRNA is UGC. So comes and fills the A site and forms a pair with mRNA having the codon UGC. So this is now the third tRNA with the serine in the A site. Now in the P site we have peptidyl, peptidyl what is called tRNA, a tRNA with the two amino acids, that is a peptide. Now the mRNA then moves through the ribosome by three bases, that is it is moving along by one codon. One codon contains three bases, so it moves along. So, the mRNA then moves through the ribosome by three bases. Normally, the ribosome is moving. Now, the mRNA is moving. Though the statement is given, you have to understand that one. The ribosome is moving on a line. That line is nothing but mRNA. So, one apple and another the codons are exposed. And bringing the amino acid by the tRNA to pair with that codon. That's happening. So, the mRNA then moves through the ribosome by three bases means one codon. Now, as a result, what is happening? This expels the deacylated, that is deacylated means without amino acid. Once the amino acid has been removed, once the bond between the tRNA and the amino acid has been removed, that's a covalent bond. What is happening? The tRNA is called deacylated or uncharged tRNA. And from P site, and what is happening? And most peptide tRNA, that is now from the A site, a tRNA with the two amino acids moving to what is called actually the P site, P site. And most peptidyl tRNA 
from A side to B side and empties the A side. Now the A side is emptied. Now we have actually now the TRNA with the two amino acids, what is called a peptidyl TRNA, moves to the B side from A side with the two amino acids. As a result, what is happening? The A side becomes emptied and that provides a space for entry of the next, what is called the TRNA with amino acid. Here I am taking that one, what is called the serine. Now, normally what is happening, a peptide bond is formed between the second amino acid, that is alanine, and the third amino acid, serine. So now, in the A position, we have TRNA with the three amino acids, that is a tripeptide. And from that one, it is shifted to the B side. So the shifting of what is called a peptidyl TRNA with the peptide from A side to the P side is called translocation, shifting, simply shifting of TRNA with the peptide to the what is called P side from A side and that is called what is known as translocation. So it is an energy requiring process. The energy provided for that one is nothing but GTP. Hydrolysis of GTP energy is normally release and that one is responsible for shifting of what is called peptidyl TRNA from the A side to the P side and that process is called translocation. That process is called translocation. What is translocation? The movement of TRNA with what is called peptides from A side to P side is called translocation. It is an energy recurring process. The energy is provided by the hydrolysis of guanosine triphosphate. The energy is provided by GTP. That's about translocation from A to B side. Now, what's the role of ribosomes? Now, the ribosomes contain, you know, that one the main enzyme peptidyl transferase. The P site is so called because it contains a peptidyl transferase enzyme for the formation of peptide bond. Along with, you also have ribozyme. The one, you know, that one just actually doing the process of, that is a splicing process. Now, the ribosome catalyzes the formation of peptide bond just between the amino acids, formation of peptide bond between the amino acids and by adding amino acid one by one to the growing polypeptide chain. So it plays a catalytic and structural role, forming the structure as well as catalyzes, you see that one, the formation of peptide bond by adding amino acids to the growing polypeptide chain. Now actually the ribosome moves from one codon to another codon just along the mRNA in the 5-3-dust direction. The meaning for that one, translation always occurs in 5-3-dust direction. Either application process or transcription process or translation process, all events occur only in 5-3-dust direction. So, the ribosome moves from codon to codon along mRNA in 5-3-dust direction. Now, amino acids are added, translated into a polypeptide chain because of that's the message dictated by the mRNA. That's a message in the mRNA. As dictated by mRNA only, the amino acids are selected and added to the polypeptide chain. Now, what do you mean by polysomes or polyribosomes? Some cases, you know that when if you are taking this is on the mRNA, we have a cluster of a cluster of ribosomes. Now, this is mRNA. Now this is a ribosome. So sometimes what will happen, the cluster of ribosomes which are linked together by mRNA is called as polysome or polyribosome. They are the site of protein so they form the site of protein synthesis. So once again it will be. So a cluster of ribosomes which are linked together by mRNA and forming the site of protein synthesis is called polysome or polyribosomes. So with that I concluded the second event of what is called the translation process elongation. So I completed initiation and what we have elongation of translation. So we have to conclude a paragraph of what is called the termination of polypeptide synthesis. That is nothing but the termination process. Okay, we will proceed. I mentioned about what is polyribosome or polysome. Here I represent a simple diagram. It is a cluster of ribosomes which are linked together by mRNA. See, I mentioned about the cluster of ribosomes and they are linked together by mRNA and they form the site of protein synthesis. Now, let's go to the last and final process of translation. Under the translation, we have completed initiation and elongation of polypeptide chain. We have to go for the termination of polypeptide synthesis. 
How is how does it occur? Now you carriers have the cytoplasm that is also called a cytosol. The cytoplasm is also called cytosol, a fluid. That is what we have the cytoplasm. So you carriers have cytosolic proteins. The proteins found in the cytoplasm. These proteins are called the release factors. What is their function? They recognize the termination codons, either UAE or UAG or UGA, when present at the A site. So there is the starting point of termination. Once this codon, any one of these codons are exposed, automatically the protein synthesis comes to an end. It is being stopped. Now when the ribosomes reaches a stop codon, so it is moving just all along the what is called mRNA. Now reaching the stop codon, once it reaches a stop codon, the protein synthesis comes to an end. So once the codon, what we have the termination codon is exposed in the A site. When we have this mRNA reaches or we can say ribosome reaches the stop codon, ultimately the protein synthesis comes to an end. Normally, the ribosomes are considered as a protein-making factors of the cell. Protein-making factors of the cell. Now, when the polypeptide chain synthesis is completed, what is happening? Now, the ribosome releases the polypeptide. And also, it detaches itself from what is called the mRNA. So, two events occur. One, what we call the release of polypeptides. Another event, the ribosome detaches itself from what is called the mRNA. And as soon as the mRNA has been released, what is happening? The two subunits, the large and the small subunits, split and so that they get separated. This is the end of the termination process. So with that, I completed the protein synthesis. Now I draw the diagram, this is a simple diagram, not as in the book, you can just follow it. Now here I represented the pictures of the diagram to show or to explain the phenomenon of translation. Now this is number one, we have the two subunits, large and small. In the large subunit we have P site and A site. Now this is the mRNA which is in between what is called the large and then small subunits. Now the first tRNA with the methionine directly just pairs with the codon of mRNA in the P site. So this is called methionine tRNA. This is the only tRNA which is attached to the P site. All of the surfaces are attached to the A site, then only shifted to the P site. So we have tRNA, anticodon, the three, this is the mRNA, the codon, which are pairing with the anticodon. Now we have the first amino acid all already just there at the P site with the tRNA. Now the second tRNA is approaching the A site. Now in the second diagram we are representing what we have. One tRNA with what is called one amino acid, methionine. And another tRNA as per the book, what is given, alanine. Now what is happening, a peptide bond is formed between these two. So here we see that one, a peptide bond is formed between these two. As a result, the covalent bond between this first tRNA and the methionine breaks. Now we have the tRNA with the dipeptide. So this is called peptidyl tRNA. First it is called amino acid tRNA with only amino acid. After a peptide bond is formed between the amino acids, when a dipeptide, tripeptide, anything else is present, then this tRNA is called peptidyl tRNA. Now, the next step. So, what is happening? Now, this peptidyl tRNA from A site is shifted to the P site. This is called translocation. Now, as a result, what is called non acylated or unacylated, uncharged tRNA is moving out. It is being released from the tRNA. The E site that is called exit site that is not represented in the book. Now what is happening here? Just one by one, actually the amino acids are added. Then when the mRNA or the ribosome is approaching what is called the stop codon at A site, either what we have that is UAE, EAG or UGA, automatically what is happening? The protein synthesis comes to an end. So there are certain release factors present in the cytoplasm. They release what is called the polypeptide chain. Normally they expose the function of what is called the releasing factors to recognize the what is called the stop codons. So any one of these three stop codons are exposed when the ribosome is approaching what is called the codon end or we have what is called the A site. Now finally what is happening the termination process we have. 
Now the releasing factors are released. Then we have the ribosome that is normally releases the mRNA. At the same time, also it releases the polypeptide chain which is being synthesized. And finally, the two subunits get separated. So we have in the medium the reversible subunits, larger subunit of 60 and smaller subunit of 40. Suppose you are taking the eukaryotes, we have two subunits. One is 60S, another 140S. These are the two subunits. So we have the diagram shown here, also in the book, refer both. So remember those actually symbols used because it's not visible in the book, you go through the book quickly. So there is the end of the protein synthesis, we have to go for the next one, what is called alternative splicing and some others, the importance etc. in the next class. Okay, thank you.